welcome, Chief <laughs> Anthony Wilson. Thank you for your flexibility today and, and giving me an opportunity to just chat with you and learn from you about uh, your role in this community where we both live. I'm just eager to learn about you and your changemaker journey. I'm going to just start by asking you to tell us about yourself. Where were you grown and who are your people and why does that matter in your life? I guess the, uh, the, the biggest thing is that, that I'm, I call myself a Blacksburg resident. I've spent probably 48 of my 58 years here, a little more than that. My dad was a, the provost of Virginia Tech when we came and much to his disappointment, I, I was not a scholarly student. <laughs> and uh, as I graduated high school, uh, I, I felt there was nowhere better in the world to grow up in Blacksburg, mm -hmm. Virginia. Most fun place we had, especially in the late 70s, early mm -hmm. 80s. Uh, I think I was too fun a kid. <laughs> I, you know, there was always somewhere better to be than <laughs> school. And you, you live around here, the river is very attractive. Oh, and so, it's, <laughs> so we spent a lot of time doing other things. Consequently, when I graduated, I went to work for a couple of years and then, but what I really wanted to do was find a way to serve. And so I ended up going in the Marine Corps and that was the best thing that ever happened to me. It took a very young, undisciplined, no real direction. They were perfect for a wild kid, yeah. absolutely perfect taught me to understand life a little better, to, to appreciate education. And, and like I said, I grew up. I also saw a lot of the world. I saw a lot of different things. But, you know, one thing that was really uh, important was that no matter where I went, and we, we looked around, I got married at the end of my tour, and we looked around of all over the United States. We actually, I got out in California and we, we took our time coming back to see as a young couple, we had no strings attached and mm -hmm. where would we go? And, and lo and behold, we couldn't find any place better than here. Yeah. I, I went back to school. I finished uh, a degree in agriculture at Virginia Tech, worked in the private sector for a few years while we had, uh, had our children. And, and while that was a, a good job, it was a good career, I still missed there was a part of me that, that really missed serving and being part of a team and being part of something bigger. Mm -hmm. And I started out by joining the fire department, which I've been a member now for 30 years. Mm -hmm. And one day someone said, why don't you, have you ever thought about being a police officer? And I thought back to my rocky youth and I thought, eh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure they would want me to, to, to come. But, you know, and then I talked to my wife and, and, I basically uh, I quit a $40,000 a year job and I took this job which was about I think we made $19,200 yeah. like I said my wife was a teacher and I was a police mm -hmm. officer and, and our kids got free lunch I think till they were in high school uh -huh. yeah. so the life it, of a servant a public that's servant right. yeah, it doesn't <laughs> that's pay right. well yep. but it, I found it that mm -hmm. it, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, you kind of have this revelation that, mm -hmm. that, you know, I, I was good at this. I was good at that, but this came natural mm -hmm. and it wasn't just the mechanics of policing. It's mm -hmm. the philosophy mm -hmm. of serving in the community. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you spend so little of your 12 hour day actually enforcing, you spend a whole lot more time actually serving and helping people. And, um, I found it, the, the, the people I met were committed to each other. They were committed to this community at a level that was pretty close to what I'd had in the Marine Corps. Yeah. And, uh, and so I knew this is what I was supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. Working in a college community is the coolest, toughest job you'll ever have mm -hmm. because uh, you know our demographic is 18 to 24 year olds. Mm -hmm. We're in the middle of Southwest Virginia, this little mountainous town that has this enormous amount of youth and energy, but it also has folks from all over the world. Mm -hmm. And there's different cultures coming in, there's different philosophies. One of the things that absolutely shaped the way I viewed policing and, and protecting the public came from a very serious event 
that happened in Blacksburg and on April 16th. And from that, you really try to figure out what the right balance was because this place has to stay that way. There's no way a college town can become a concentration camp. You know, even when, when horrific violence visits, right. it can't steal the identity and what has to happen in a college right. town. And I always tell, when I talk to students, it's like, like this is where you come to get your weird on. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> and, and we gotta let you get your weird on, you know? <laughs> so it's, it's, so if you wanna sit on the drill field and you wanna joust with pool noodles, you know, <laughs> that's why you're in Blacksburg, yeah. Virginia. But at the same time, we have to protect them. Mm -hmm. So that is that is a very delicate balance. Mm -hmm. And it's probably the most difficult thing possible. Mm -hmm. It was the first part of learning that th this is a huge collaborative exercise. Mm -hmm. One of the things tragedy taught me also was is that we look too often through a single lens, mm -hmm. especially in police work. We look through a single lens to, to find solutions when some of the smartest people are standing right beside you, mm -hmm. just simply because they have a different lens. Mm -hmm. And I think that was was a, an enormous part of, of my growing experience as a police leader in Blacksburg. Mm -hmm. He learned to value other cultures and other people's lenses so much. So it's kind of a two-way street, yeah. is that we provide this setting and they provide this unique experience to, to experience the world kind of in our own little corner yeah. of the earth. That the real solution to your anxiety about world events are locked in community involvement. Mm -hmm. It's in a local response to. There was a mosque in New Zealand that was attacked mm -hmm. and then relative short period afterwards there was a synagogue in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. We found out that the, the communities of faith all wanted to reach out but nobody knew an appropriate measure mm -hmm. and nobody really felt comfortable like how do i support this other culture or this mm -hmm. other religious mm -hmm. belief lauren colliver on our on our town council was deeply moved by pittsburgh mm -hmm. and so we talked about how do we become a more compassionate blacksburg mm -hmm. and we just started the ground roots effort of getting together a small group mm -hmm. getting some representation from the faith base, from government, to simply say, how do we channel Blacksburg inwardly? Mm -hmm. And to allow people to express their remorse, their support to national events, but in a local setting. Mm -hmm. And I think that's gonna be the key to the future, is that we, we redirect this energy mm -hmm. towards solving local community issues to give people that peace of mind and to reduce the anxiety of just really knowing too much about what's going on globally. I think it's yeah. going to be something we'll be proud of in the future. I think the thing I'm, I'm the proudest of is our education program. I have police officers in every school in Blacksburg, and we don't just provide security. We don't just teach fundamental programs. I expect my guys and girls who do that job, they're the best people we have. It's a very tough job to get mm -hmm. because we expect them to do so much. But we expect them to be mentors and we expect mm -hmm. them to be teach children about community and about what we believe in as far as, as serving mm -hmm. each other, becoming a collective body versus an individual. Mm -hmm. I thought we were very successful in delivering children out of elementary school. We have a, have a really great fifth grade field day where we bring all the elementary schools together. It's the first time you yes. see their graduating class and we sp yeah. just put them all in a pile and we spread them out into teams and they have a, a healthy day of fun. And But it's the first time they get to meet from the five elementaries that dump into Blacksburg Middle. This is it. This is, this is what you're gonna look like. This is your graduating class. Mm -hmm. So, you know, remember you're always gonna be stronger collectively. Mm -hmm. You know, this is your team yeah. and really support it. We do the same in middle school. We have programs where, where we're working with at risk. We have extensive programs to get our eighth graders ready to come up into high school. And we mentor, we pass along children that need to be mentored mm -hmm. through with our next level. And then in high school, we, we have the same thing. And, and my high school SROs were, were, were really pushing hard to, to keep kids engaged and, and stay the course. You know, mm -hmm. even if there was no support at home, they were constantly saying, you know, just finish this. You'll be mm -hmm. glad, you'll see the reward. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, 
they didn't sometimes. You know, we found that we were kind of delivering kids with a high school education to the same job they would have gotten had they quit in the ninth grade. At the same time, we were having a hard time recruiting police officers. Mm -hmm. So we said, what if we grow our own? Mm -hmm. What if through this mentoring process, we actually saw a kid in there who really, that we had a hand in mentoring through them, them through these difficult years. And at the end of the road, they say, I wanna be that guy or that girl. Mm -hmm. And to me, what better candidate to do this job? Right. So I went to New River Community College and I said, here's what we're thinking. And this is what I, I feel like is a shortcoming. And part of our issue was you had to be 21 years old to be a police officer. Mm -hmm. So we had these gap years after high school, there were two years. So I said, mm -hmm. what if I filled it with education? You know, could we create a two year program at New River to fill these two years where these kids will be now eligible for me to hire? Through that little conversation uh, and, and some very strange fundraising, it's, it's weird to be a police chief. And <laughs> they say it's effective to be a fundraiser when you have a gun, but uh, <laughs> they very rarely get turned down for money. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> But it, we raised a quick $15,000 and put our first five kids into what was our called Books and Badges program. Mm -hmm. And it gave them two years of, of college, but it also, part of the deal was they had to do 80 hours of community service mm -hmm. with us, which gave them an internship with us. Mm -hmm. It was between us, Christopher Police Department and the Sheriff's Office. So they got to see law enforcement. And the beauty of it was at the end, there were no strings attacked. If we could spark like, and inside, if they wanted to become, they wanted to go on to a four year or they wanted to go do something else, no penalty. Because I guarantee you that in those two years, we would teach that child to be a better citizen. But an interesting side note was as soon as we took it on the road to sell it, every group we talked to, Blacksburg Partnership, some of the other groups around said, why don't we do that for every kid? It's just a question of money. And yeah, it's just, it's yeah. a question of what, what you want to invest. But I'm going to tell you from doing my job that we have, we're never going to arrest our way out of, out of poverty, out of, mm -hmm. you know, um, historic criminal behavior, generational poverty. We're never going to figure out, mm -hmm. we can't arrest our way. We can't subsidize our way out. Right. We have to educate our way out. Right. And so as soon as we started that conversation, we took it to the board of supervisors, um, we had to show them that we could raise some seed money. Mm -hmm. um, New River had a very cool fledgling program. The ACE program had just started in Giles County. We took that show on the road. And mm -hmm. today, now every kid in Montgomery County gets a free two-year college education. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's phenomenal. phenomenal. And yeah. it's, it, yeah. it's, and I'm getting ready to go on the road. I still do all the community service because it, it's amazing what barriers that, that come up. The county didn't have the capacity to fund a full-time position to manage the community service aspect because every kid does 80 hours of community service. I'll do it. I'll do it for two years, get us off the ground for free. And, uh, and now I'm, this is going to be my fourth year of doing it. But it's, the, it's absolutely the best thing I've ever done. Not only do I get to to interact with these kids, right. but I also get to funnel them to some of the best people in our community. And those are the ones who are volunteering for a lifetime. That They say, well, how many of them are actually getting their 80 hours in? I said, the more interesting story is how many are doing 800 who yeah. do it and just say, I just love it. Uh -huh. I work at the animal shelter. I do whatever. I love uh -huh. it. I've never, you know, felt I found my place. We're not only educating them, we're teaching them what it's like to be a citizen in a community. Exactly. There is this huge need for a lot of these technical jobs. Mm -hmm. And we allow the full technical side too. And I was talking to a couple, we went and did a, a promotional video for their instrumentation program at New River. Kids coming out of there making eighty to $100,000, <laughs> two years, uh -huh. no college debt. Yes. And they're coming out and they are sought after. Yes. So, you know, the, and I can sell that in a high school that there's the, this this brilliant child who's born into this family that does not speak the word college, but I can sell this. I can say, I'll tell yeah. you what, you invest two years in this yeah. skill set and you will be the first generation in your household making six figures. This is simply, this is community yeah. at its finest, investing in the most valuable resource that we have. The dialogue on race, you know, we had uh, our law enforcement group really had two charges in the beginning. One was to see if 
racial profiling existed. And the other was to see if we matched demographically with our African-American population. And were, were we recruiting and retaining African-American to be police officers? We've been doing it since 2013, and we have voluntarily turned over. We collect all our demographic information on all our traffic stops, on all our uh, arrests and so on, and we analyze them. And it was part of a transparency to say, you know, I, I firmly believe that, that you can be well-intentioned and just not well-informed right. if you're not, if you're afraid to actually mm -hmm. look at your data and see what's going on. Because you realize how complex it is. It, it gave us an avenue of dialogue that we've never had, of things that have come out of our relationship there. This is an ancient history. This is our history. Chief Bill Brown, who hired me, he's one of the, one of the, the guys who mentored me. He's yeah. a Christiansburg Institute graduate. Yes. This is all modern history. Yeah. So we, we looked at those two charges, and one of the things that pushed us to the Books and Badges program was our dialogue on race. And we're yeah. sitting in this room saying, we can talk about this all day long, right. or we can simply build something. Let's build a program that has the mechanism to put the very best kids in our community. And, and, and let's look at what our African-American kids, to see if we can get some of them interested in right. serving. Right. And out of this little tiny committee comes this enormous first program. We, we now look at community police relationship. And you notice with all our dialogue and race, we do coffee with a cop. And we get to sit down and we get to talk about real issues. Yeah. Where else in Southwest Virginia can you come on a Saturday morning, casual conversation, talk with the Board of Supervisors, the Town Council members, the school board, the school superintendent, the police chiefs from each of the communities, mm -hmm. the, the sheriff of the community, mm -hmm. educators from Virginia Tech. Mm -hmm. You Look what you've drawn. This is the hottest meeting in town. If right. you have any issues going on, our group has, yes. has created this opportunity. Yeah. So something's happening. It's an absolutely, it's, it's been one of the best community driven mm -hmm. things that we've mm -hmm. done. And, uh, and I, I, I'll say a lot of communities who would fear this kind of interaction, especially in a volatile time when police services right. are being right. being really scrutinized. Right. If you truly are transparent and you truly do care about your community, this is one of the best things we've ever right. done. Yeah, We've invested heavily over the last few years in the spiritual part of this work that you have to believe this is a calling mm -hmm. to do this job effectively. Mm -hmm. You can't you can't come to work and clock in and you have to believe you're put on earth to do this mm -hmm. job, mm -hmm. to effectively do it. 98% of, of the folks who were already working here said, you know, I feel I was put on earth to do this job. And that, that the more I do it, the more I realize that this is what I'm supposed to do. And that's how I can serve at this level. Mm -hmm. So that told me we have the right core group Absolutely. of folks. So we're operating at this level. Yeah. And so when, and, and you can imagine that somebody's, somebody's throwing a rock at you, that, that, that you, you believe that you are on earth to do this thing. And then all of a sudden there's this, uh, your, your own community, you know, bucks up a little bit mm -hmm. and says, you know, we're not sure we like what you guys represent and your whole identity is tied up. Right. And so it took a lot of navigation to say, you know, public questioning and public, you know, scrutiny is not public, you know, automatically dissatisfaction or disgust or anything else. And so we had to get it off that. And that's a lot of my job yeah. is to get out here and be a conduit to the public and then also come back and be a conduit to my guys and girls right. to tell them, hey, you know, while this is a contentious period in, in history, right. we're blessed. We live yeah. in the very best community ever. Yeah. The, the citizens here actually do support us very well. Yeah. And the job you do is very much what they want. Right. So we, we live in a very good place. And I think the, that spirited dialogue is part of it. Yeah. And it's the fact that they say, you know, I, I can do it and, and I can defend our commitment and our spiritual connection, right. but I can also listen and because there's, there's total validity in yes. what I'm hearing from yes. the other side of the yes. coin. So yes. 
it's that's true transparency yeah. is to be able to do that. We're growing as a community. We have to build the community that they want to emulate when they go somewhere else. It's our mission, you know, and while while there's so many hours and so many curriculum things that have to happen to graduate right. and get a diploma, we have the whole other side of the coin and that is how do we want to how do we want these little seeds to spread throughout the world and that's that is probably the most interesting part of this dynamic is yeah. that we have we have this opportunity to do something so huge yeah. so magnificent because we get a constant flow of these folks coming in from all over the world and if we just simply strive to do it better here, if this is the best four years on the planet, mm -hmm. I guarantee the majority of them will go out. And if they can't seek it out, they'll create it. I give you a set of about five or six rules. Mm -hmm. And you tell me whether you want to be policed or protected mm -hmm. by how well you adhere to these rules. Mm -hmm. And uh, so far, you do a magnificent job. Mm -hmm. And so they say, yeah, that's, that's, I said, but think about that as a, as a total parameter mm -hmm. that don't you like having that kind of power over that you can tell, you know, how much of my freedom I want to encroach upon, how much I want to be policed or protected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's your right as a citizen. And we're practicing that every day. Mm -hmm. And you see what happens when you guys and girls do such a, a fantastic job, which they do of simply taking responsibility, taking your safety seriously, and then the police are simply there as a resource to protect you. Mm -hmm. And they leave there going, wow, that's mm -hmm. not just game day. Yeah, Every day is game day. Right. If you do it right, yeah. that's the way you yeah. should be doing your community. This mm -hmm. is how we should be, every right. citizen should be experiencing this. Yeah, It's basically saying, you know, if I abide by the rules, if I, you know, if I'm trying to keep everything doing things safely, yeah. then the police are simply here to protect you. Right. You know, and that's, I don't have to police you. Yeah. So it's, it's actually, that's what I love about yeah. being in a college town yeah. is that, that we're constantly saying, you know, here's, here's a life lesson that okay. this isn't, this isn't Supreme Court stuff. This is simply, how do you, how do you get along in society right. with each other and how do we keep how do we stay safe? How do we stay productive? But it, it's this is not about about government or anything else. This is really more about social interaction. Sadly, violence has become so prevalent in society that you can. You, it's hard to look out and say that that violence won't won't visit every small community in the country. Mm -hmm. We learned from ours. Mm -hmm. And while it was horrific, while it was the darkest time on earth, we thought, it actually was the most revealing time. Mm -hmm. And and like I said, the April sixteenth was was the darkest day. The seventeenth was the brightest. And and that candlelight vigil were, were was the first time that I can remember where towns citizen, county citizen, high school kid, elementary school kid, Virginia Tech student, faculty, staff from all walks of life came together in one place and said, A, we're here for each other and B, that this doesn't define us, mm -hmm. that violence will not define us. There was such a wound, mm -hmm. but when you really pulled back the wound all the way, you saw what was underneath. Mm -hmm. And that was that this community was real and this is the real that was the soul of this community that was kind of bared for everyone to see mm -hmm. and we flourished even though times were going to get rougher afterwards yeah. we had yeah. some rough seas but now our sense of community is palpable when tragedy you know hits your community look for the opportunity to see what you really are yeah. and embrace there will be a positive side. And if you embrace that, it can become what you are. That we saw the darkest day. And and all I remember about the darkest day is that I saw the brightest day 24 hours later. Mm -hmm.